a destination is important. And if you don't have a destination, then you're just a leaf flowing down a river. And, I, and I, I'm sure Drake is the same. You say he's executive producing shows and all that, lending his money, his time, and his creativity to other outlets so that when the knees get sore and that throat don't work, his creativity still has a medium of expression. All of Drake's smart decisions have led to his biggest role yet, Drake the Mogul. A combination of business savvy and team building has allowed Drake to accumulate a massive $150 million estimated net worth. He has spread his influence into music, film, TV, sports, and fashion, all feeding back into the larger Drake empire. Here, he follows in the footsteps of major rap businessmen by developing his own unique brand. There's been very few hip hop moguls since, you know, the inception of this culture. We can look at Diddy and, you know, Sean John, Jay-Z with his own massive label management company, he's become this billionaire. And those who have become these hip hop moguls, these business moguls, these multi-millionaires and billionaires at this point have worked so incredibly hard over decades to do that but have also created this path for someone like Drake to start inching his way towards that path. I relate Drake's career to all the mega stars' careers. Once you have the audience's attention, you know, what are you gonna do about it? People wanna know what your taste can do in other, in other spaces, so I always advise that. For the people who really have an entrepreneurial bone that really want that, he just won't let up off the gas. He doesn't miss a beat. Drake's brand OVO, short for October's very own, is the umbrella under which everything Drake falls. Their logo is the owl, an homage to the group's nocturnal lifestyle. And if you look closely, right there in the eyes and the beak, sits the name of the brand itself, OVO. As a manager in the beginning, you know, uh, one of the first conversations I had with him was music can end at any time. God forbid that some of the hottest artists in the game became cold and God forbid something happens to his voice or something like that and it gets taken away, right? So I always thought, you know, I tell every artist that I manage, in the beginning we need to be thinking about growing your brand along with the music. It was a unanimous kind of ideal that everything was about the brand. All the earlier decisions, whether it was deals, endorsement deals, if it didn't fit within the theme of, of the brand that we was trying to grow, at that time, we didn't do the deal. We turned down bags on bags. Drake has ventured into alcohol, restaurants, and record label management, all as a way to expand his reach and solidify his influence as a mogul for decades to come. He's making those decisions very wisely. Everything is not just, oh, because somebody's calling, they want you to come do that. He's not, in t he's not quick on those endorsements. He's selective on those endorsements. It's more of a sniper attack. So I think he loves to do the music and that's why he does it, but then he also is like, I got a piece of this, I got a piece of that, I'm over here, I'm over here. And I think that's a goal that a lot of people should strive for. You don't want to have just one stream of income. The one place you may have seen Drake's brand influence most clearly in day-to-day -day life is through his clothing line. He has developed his merchandise into one of the most in-demand streetwear lines. I'm crazy for the hour, you know, limited edition, you know, hour for life, you know. I came straight from Switzerland just for the store opening here in Toronto. OVO has stores worldwide, including in Toronto, Vancouver, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, London, and Las Vegas. Why does anybody buy uh, I Love New York shirt when they go to New York? Why do we buy trinkets from Cuba when we go to Cuba? I want a, I want a Cubana, I want a nice Havana cigar. We do this to say that I'm taking a piece of the city back. When people come into Toronto, which we love, you'll notice the tourists because they'll walk down Queen Street with an OVO bag in their hand. The OVO owl to a Torontonian, that's like saying I'm wearing Toronto everywhere I go. 
Drake can't do it alone, as he said himself on Nonstop. Future took the business and ran it for me. I let Ali take the aisle, told him brand it for me. If you're gonna be a great leader, you gotta delegate. And he's got some very talented people in his camp who have very specific ways of doing things. And he's trusted in their vision and allowed them to conduct themselves as if they were the ones in charge. Drake's OVO brand and business partners, Oliver L. Katib and Future the Prince, are key to Drake's strategy. Future the Prince, also known as Adele Neer, began working with Drake as his tour DJ before becoming his manager. Future is also one of the architects behind OVO Fest and the lead on Drake's partnerships with Apple, LeBron James's production company Spring Hill Entertainment, as well as A24 Films, where he and Drake are executive producers on the HBO series Euphoria. He is not just a business partner, but also a close friend. You can often see him sitting courtside with Drake at Raptors home games. Future's counterpart in all things OVO business is Oliver L. Katib. He is the person behind the OVO name, October's very own, a reference to the birthday month he shares with Drake. The two met when Al Khatib was managing the tastemaker clothing boutique, Lounge. He is thought to be Drake's ear to the ground. He is credited with both bringing The weekend to Drake's attention and signing Party Next Door to OVO Sound. El Khatib also oversees the OVO clothing line, including partnerships with Roots, Canada Goose, and Nike. El Khatib and Future the Prince's relentless work ethic has fueled Drake's success as a musical artist and beyond. He can just lean on them to be good at what they do, as opposed to having to have his hand in the pot and to babysit his friends. Drake's really good at making music. I'm not sure if he's the best clothing designer, but he's definitely got a damn good clothing designer on his team. I'm not sure if he's the best basketball mind, but he's got a damn good basketball mind on his team. So you got to do stuff to make your legacy live on, and I feel like you can just Look at certain people like like Drake, Nipsey Hussle, Bill Gates. There's a lot of different people out there who have set the footprints down for you to kind of just go off of. And sure. there's a lot of young people looking up to these artists. And it's nice to see someone not just come up, be an artist, and that's it. They're just an artist. They're you know what I mean? Man. Like, you know, they're, they're businessmen. And you got to be consistent and find ways to pitch your brand. In some unlikely places, there was a, a Wu-Tang video game, right? So that wasn't a big economic deal for us at the time, right? Because the video game market wasn't fully blown to what it is now, but it put us Set in- the trend for it. Yeah, it put us in the household of gamers. The hell you say? What? The old enemy of Shaolin. They've taken Master Zen. We have to help him. Maybe they'll come with a Drake ice cream. And now you got Baskin and Robbins with 31 flavors, and there's a flavor he developed. And that just puts him in a different location. With OVO on its way to being a household name, Drake saw an opportunity to partner with a brand he's loved since his childhood, one on the cusp of its hottest era yet. Coming to you live from the big city with the greatest in the world, the champions. We got one with the dip. That was amazing. Sure, I could cheer them on and wear the jersey, but I'd rather revamp the team I want to put my input into the building. I want to make it more exciting. I want to make it more fanatic. And it, it, it's just something that I've always wanted to do. Drake's highest profile side gig is Raptors Global Ambassador, an alliance that came at the perfect time. In 2013, the team was in a rebuilding phase and developing a new strategy for success. But Drake had been a loyal fan of his hometown team from the beginning, even as they struggled to find respect and success in the NBA. The Toronto Raptors have always been like the joke of the NBA, which is insane. 
we've never ever been to the finals. We've never had a ring. We literally started from the people who laughed at Dino or the Barney or all that kind of stuff. We've had mild successes in the past, but we've never been a super successful organization. But what we do have is a very cool city to build upon. There have been celebrity fans of basketball teams for decades. Spike and the Knicks, Jack and the Lakers, Meek and the Sixers. But this ambassadorship was something different, a real role in the organization. It all paid off when the Raptors had their best season of all time that ended with a championship win. I think the best moment would have to be when he freaked out over Giannis missing that free throw. It um, really put doubt in the mind of his team. Like, Giannis' agent comes out and makes comments. People are complaining. The NBA is complaining. Why is he so close to the court? Why wouldn't he be? He's part of the organization, and also he's a big fan. He brings a level of coolness to the Raptors, but I also think for the Raptors, it's cool to have Drake. Drake's next troll job will be blank. Everyone's gonna be waiting to see what he's gonna do. He's just gonna sit there with his legs crossed, just like he's watching the tennis, and he's not gonna say a word to anybody. The and, tennis. And that is gonna throw the entire Warriors organization Wow. Up. During a game, you see him up cheering and celebrating and, and, and getting right into it, and that's probably not what you expect from an ambassador, but that's just because that natural fan in him can't be quelled. I love Toronto, I love this team, and we're going to the NBA Finals. Let's go! If the Raptors win a game in Drake's courtside, yell at the players on SportsCenter, it'll move higher up in the highlight pack. That's going to affect ticket sales. That's going to affect the brand. That's going to affect your ability to market yourself to free agents in the offseason. He created a lot of buzz, a lot of hype that winning basketball games potentially could not have done for this organization. Drake's Raptors fandom comes from a real place, but that doesn't mean the partnership wasn't a major strategic play. The Raps got a co-sign from the world's biggest artist, and OVO got its logo on the Raptors' jerseys, merchandise, and practice facility, as well as a themed regular season game dubbed Drake Night. Hip-hop and basketball have always been married. To be able to put him at the front of it and say, hey, this is my team, and then integrate his OVO brand, Raptors OVO, it goes hand in hand as well. He gets the hottest songs because they're gonna play them on the commercial break, and then they're gonna shoot him, and then they're gonna shoot it to every media market and then people are gonna take that and they're gonna put it on their social media and they're gonna make memes out of it. What he's doing is he's hijacking the media market, right? If he sits courtside, the amount of impressions and the value of the impressions that he gets from sitting courtside um, will supersede any marketing campaign he can do for a single song or album. He was able to uh, utilize his position not only for music, but more for the status of where he's moving to and what he can dabble in. It's not just rap, it's not just music, it's not just tours. If you've ever been to a game, you know it can feel like a Drake album listening party. Drake has cemented his legacy in the sports world by creating some of the most iconic sports anthems of all time. My number one go-to Drake song at a Raptors game is Started From The Bottom because we all, we all feel that one. We all identify with that one, especially being the underdogs in music, being the underdogs in basketball, on a global scale with the underdogs in a lot of ways. And to be able to be on top of the game, that song just exemplifies that. Started from the bottom may be the Raptors' unofficial anthem, but Drake and sports have always gone hand in hand. And not just with basketball. In fact, in 2015, Drake was the most popular artist in Major League Baseball for walkout music, beating out jock rock staple Thunderstruck. And that love goes both ways. Strategy or not, Drake's music is rife with sports references and shout-outs. Drake paid homage to the Toronto Blue Jays' repeat championships with his Meek Mill diss track, Back to Back. He used a picture of Joe Carter's 1993 championship winning home run as the cover. Uh, now I've got some street cred with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a really the titles and lyrics of two tracks on the mixtape, What a Time to Be Alive, focuses on sports. Big Rings and Jumpman, a tribute to Michael Jordan and the Air Jordan logo, the same brand that Drake has an endorsement deal with. Shout out, shout out, Michael Jordan just said to
Drake also likes to give shout-outs to his athlete friends in his music. He name-dropped Canadian baller Andrew Wiggins on draft day, Kevin Durant on Weston Road Flows, and Steph Curry on 0 to 100. But no sports team gets more love from the rapper than the NBA champions. We world champions! Drake released a two-track EP to celebrate the Raptors' 2019 victory, dubbed the best in the world. It featured the dual singles Omerta and Money in the Grave. The release got coverage not just by music media, but by sports media as well, thanks to the sporting world's attention on the Raptors. Interestingly, both songs are actually light on sports references, save for a shout out to his longtime friend, LeBron James. I see this being a long term relationship between Drake and the Raptors because I think so far it's been beneficial for everybody. I think it's helped the NBA, I think it's helped Drake, I think that the Raptors are clearly going through a successful phase. As long as it's working for both parties, they'll, they'll continue to connect with each other. Drake's acting career may still be on hiatus, but he has demonstrated a major interest in a return to the screen, but this time, behind the scenes. People transition when they're getting older, and I think what we're seeing at the end of this decade is Drake planting the seeds for that. So the next decade of Drake could be his awesome force in the film and television industry. As Drake builds his business empire, he is looking west, towards Hollywood. After getting his start on the small screen as Jimmy from Degrassi, he now wields his curatorial power as executive producer. Well, I think uh, Drake's transition to becoming an executive producer in the television and film world is one of the most exciting developments in his career right now. Um, it also follows the trajectory of the people like a Sean Jay-Z Carter. And, and I think it's a really exciting space because it allows these already very successful celebrities to be able to use their platform to bring other people up. He's gotten more involved in films that turn up at our festival every year. He knows the power of his own brand. He knows the power of uh, the influence and the attention that he can bring to something that he cares about. I think the stuff that Drake and Future, his manager, have been getting involved in in terms of film and television have just been very like a lot of things he does in his career, very savvy. I think the first thing that he produced was The Carter Effect, which is a documentary about Vince Carter and basketball in Toronto and in Canada. With, with a choice like that, it's like, it's very clearly, it comes from a point of passion. Like Drake is someone who clearly values like Toronto history, Toronto hip hop history. So I think like getting involved in that is just like another way of like him kind of like standing behind something that's also been a through line through the rest of his career. HBO's Euphoria, a gritty high school drama starring Zendaya, is the show of the summer and Drake's biggest hit as an executive producer to date. At some point you make a choice about who you are and what you want. When it comes to what teens want, Drake still has the Midas touch. Being a producer on Euphoria and like working with A24 on that is just like, number one, it's just like a really smart, good look on a Hollywood level. And there's probably bigger studios or bigger production groups that he could work with, but choosing to work with, with a group that's like really critically acclaimed and makes like really smart, considered stuff is like, I think just a sign of like the kind of moves that he wants to make. And in some ways, like Euphoria is kind of like a, a darker version of Degrassi, you know? It's like Degrassi with the gloves off. He understands, being in a teen drama himself at one point, how successful and how that really pervades culture really quickly. It's a great way to not only just kind of slip your music in there, but also get the conversation going. Drake also helped revive Top Boy, a popular British crime series. If we do this, we're back on top. What are you saying? Drake found a home for the series' third season at Netflix, a savvy doubling down of his connection to UK rap culture. It's a cult classic. It's like beloved by people in the hip hop world. It's beloved by people in the UK and outside of it. I just wanna express how, how happy this room makes me right here, you know? The show meant the world to me. I wish you the best, you know? I, I'm sure we'll, we'll be all together again when we're winning awards or talking about how successful <laughs> yeah, Anyway, thank you so much.
It's showcasing a curatorial eye that is able to recognize talent in another way. So we know that he's an amazing curator in terms of bringing together musical talent, but it looks like taking a show that was, you know, premiered in Israel and now is, has this American adaptation, taking a UK show and saying it got canceled way too soon, let's use it again. He's really, uh, I think, engaged by stories that are about people trying to overcome injustice, trying to kind of carve a place for them themselves in the world. We're back, bro. He's somebody who actually actively cares about the culture. And by that, I mean like hip hop culture and about, about making sure that it's represented correctly. And I think that in some of the mo moves that he's made, he's helping document and create touch points that people that are significant in the culture. As Drake is expanding his reach beyond music, he continues to prove that when it comes to flexing strategy as a chart topper, he can't be beat. What keeps surprising me is his ability to break these records we had no idea weren't broken already. You know, and I think people got a reminder over the last few years, like, he's number one.